We're taking a special look at medicine and money. Healthcare has been a very big topic in Washington, D.C., and much of President Obama's first year in office was consumed by the debate over how to reform the health care system. Now, of course, the cost of programs such as Medicare are central to the battle over the budget. My next guest has dealt with these issues firsthand as the Secretary of Health and Human Services during the Bush administration. He's also the former administrator of the EPA and a former Utah governor, Michael Levitt. Currently, he's the chairman of Levitt Partners. Uh, Mr. Levitt, give us a little bit of your insight as someone that was inside an administration what does this budget battle look like to you in terms of health care? Are we going to get some kind of real reform? Well, we desperately need real reform. Uh, I, I think this conversation on health care has now actually been elevated to a conversation about economic reform because uh, health care is a very important and I would say essential component of our overall economic reform. Uh, I, I, when I was Secretary of Health, I managed one-fourth of the entire United States budget. And I think that gives me some authority to say that you can't solve the deficit without uh, dealing with uh, medical entitlements. Uh, you just, the, the, the deficit is health care, and we have to reform it. We have to change it. We have to bend the cost curve. We've got to get better at providing more value for less money. Well, do you believe, having listened to President Obama's speech yesterday at George Washington University, that there can be some kind of bipartisan agreement to try to tackle the deficit and, as you say, the economic reality of health care? I had hoped I would see him reach across the aisle and say, let's work together to solve this problem. It felt to me uh, more like uh, the beginning of, of a 2012 campaign. I thought he was very aggressive uh, in the way he came about that. Uh, and I, I was discouraged by that. I don't think we have yet wrestled as a country with how desperate our situation is and how much of an economic imperative we have to change. I still think we're playing politics. Now, as someone who is a former trustee of Medicare, how sure are you that Medicare can exist in its current form? Or what do we need to do and how quickly do we need to do it to make sure it lasts? I'm quite certain that Medicare in its current form is unsustainable. And that if we don't begin to uh, change the way we deliver the care to a, in, a, in a way that we're able to provide better care at less money, uh, we will simply not be able to see that program sustained. Every year we would have a trustee meeting in April about this time and uh, we would have the government actuary tell us the year where it would become insolvent. Now I, I will say that this year the report will show that we've actually made that point of insolvency further out but it's based on what I think to be a smoke and mirrors assumptions. They have assumed that we're going to cut a bunch of Medicare coverages and that somehow, or, or reimbursements rather, and that somehow that will solve our problem. I, I don't think it's going to. I think we have a real challenge there. We've got to fundamentally change the nature of our, uh, of our approach to Medicare. What would you like to see in terms of specifics done to Medicare to help reform the program? Uh, if, I, if I were king and I could just do it, uh, I would first of all say we have the prescription drug benefit and it changed the way we deliver human services at the government level because we created a marketplace and allowed private insurance companies to offer products and we used the government to organize that efficient market and it's worked remarkably well. People like the program, it's enrolled in over 40 million people and it's costing less money than we had, than government actuaries had anticipated. First thing I would do is make part A and B, which is the hospitals and doctor sectors, look, uh, coverages rather, look a lot like part D. And it would mean that we were using government not to control or to operate the system, but to organize an efficient market. Uh, there is no bureaucracy in the world that's smart enough that they can make all these decisions without all kinds of unintended consequence. All right, we're going to continue the conversation with Michael Levitt. He's the former Health and Human Services Secretary. More on medicine and money next. Now, uh, Governor uh, Levitt, as someone who was the governor of Utah, what can you tell us as to the special problems that states face when dealing with Medicaid? 
because there have been some discussions about changing the way federal money flows to the states in order to pay for health care for people that are less fortunate. I think we can all, Tim, be encouraged by the fact that we are now having a robust conversation in Congress about the deficit. However, the deficit, the, the, the solutions they're talking about are, well, we've got to solve this in eight or ten years. Uh, the states are dealing with that in eight or ten weeks. Uh, they, they have to balance their budget now. And that's why we're seeing such dramatic movement among the governors to do, tr to, to do quite radical transforming things. They don't have a choice. They have an economic imperative that's constitutionally required of them. And there is an urgency about what they're doing that is both needed and, I might add, instructive to the Congress. What would some of those lessons be? For example, some kind of health care exchange? Well, I, I think there are two things the states currently have a lot of influence on. The first is Medicaid. And I believe Medicaid will, in fact, be the place where we begin to see innovation the soonest because the states are so desperate to drive change. They will do things that will be politically hard to do, again, because they have no choice. The other area is in the implementation of these so-called insurance, health insurance exchanges. Now, uh, th this is frankly a Republican idea that was put into the Accountable Care or the Affor Affordable Care Act with a Democratic spin. Uh, and it's a good idea if it's done correctly. If they will use government as a means of being able to create an efficient market, it's a very positive thing. If they use it to become a control mechanism so that the government controls everything, it will be a disaster. So I think the states are clearly working that direction. I think you'll see most states work toward using government as a means of creating an efficient market and making certain that it works. Michael Levitt, as someone that advises uh, hospital corporations and uh, health care executives, what are you hearing from those people that are running our hospitals? Because right now it seems from a patient perspective, it's very difficult to even find out where is the best care for certain types of procedures? There doesn't seem to be any transparency in terms of pricing, and hospitals are not even allowed to share vital price information with each other. Hospital executives are surrounded currently by uncertainty, and in some ways they're getting, they're dealing with conflicting messages. On one hand, they're doing quite well for the most part financially right now. But there are a series of changes that are coming that clearly will begin to challenge their uh, economic equation. And so they're being asked to disrupt themselves at a time when they're frankly doing pretty well. Uh, it, it will require a, a tremendous amount of leadership on the part of uh, skilled hospital uh, CEOs to, to navigate through this. And they, they're having to literally make assumptions today and then constantly be be uh, uh, recalibrating them and monitoring their effect. This is a, dif a dicey and difficult time to be in the healthcare business, and it will, they'll earn their pay in the next three years. Final question for you, Michael Levitt. What about doctors? What are you hearing from them? What are their biggest concerns? Well, the big concern for doctors these days is their reimbursement rates. And I think that's their. I think the reality is we're going to see downward reimbursement rates for most areas of the medical community because uh, you're not going to see uh, taxes increase uh, uh, in a way that will solve this problem and they're not going to also cut a lot of, of uh, coverages and so the logical place will be to start diminishing reimbursements and that will begin to drive change and it's requiring them to begin to think about how do we structure ourselves? How do we become more efficient? And so you're seeing a lot of primary care physicians or, uh, or even specialty clinics look to be acquired by hospitals and to form themselves into what's known as an accountable care organization. Lots of changes coming for doctors, but uh, this is all about reforming health care and making real change. We've got to leave it there. Michael Levitt, thank you very much from Levitt Partners, former Health and Human Services Secretary.